Chocolate Touch by Patrick Skeen Catley, illustrated by Margot Apple. Chapter 7 All right, boys and girls, Miss Plimsoll said. It is almost time for lunch. Clear up your things. Paint pots securely closed. Brushes washed. Paintings unpinned and laid out to dry. Drawing boards stacked against the wall. Ah, there's the bell. Front row first, Timothy leading, then Robin in single file. Go. John alone walked slowly in the throng hurrying against the corridors to the school cafeteria. The school was proud of the cafeteria and the food served in it. The room was spacious and bright, with windows all the way along one side overlooking the playground and the playing fields beyond. The opposite side was wholly taken up by the shiny silver service counter. Several boys and girls were already settled at tables by the time John took his place in the line. Enviously, John noticed a boy at a nearby table suck at straws dipped in a milk bottle that was dull with frost. John could imagine the refreshing taste of cold, creamy milk. At another table, a group of girls were eating fat red cherries. John could almost feel the firm fruit on his tongue and the pleasure of biting through the tart, juicy pulp. The cherries must taste good. They must be thirst-quenching. John unhappily took a tray from the pile and slid it along the rails in front of the top of the counter. He put a paper napkin, a glass, and a gleaming spoon, a knife, and a fork on the tray. It seemed hardly worth the while, but he felt that he might as well try the food and drink. Perhaps, if I eat a different way, without letting anything touch my lips, he muttered, my lunch won't all change to chocolate. He was not very hopeful. What? asked the boy standing next to him. Nothing, John said. I thought I heard you say something about chocolate, the boy said. I hope this is the day for chocolate cream pie, he added. That'd be super. On chocolate cream pie days of the past, John had been known to skip the main course so that he might spend all his lunch money on dessert. The thought of four pieces of chocolate cream pie now suddenly made his stomach feel as though he were on a roller coaster. An uneasy, flibberty gibberty sensation. John shuddered. Okay, he commented, wrinkling up his nose. The other boy shrugged his shoulders and started to choose his meal. John took a plate of cold chicken and ham, potato chips, and a crisp, moist lettuce and tomato salad. The white of the chicken, the pink of the ham, the gold of the potatoes, the pale green of the lettuce, and the red of the tomato looked delicious. He also took a half pint of milk, a thick crusted whole wheat roll, and a cool pat of butter, a tumbler of water with ice cubes clinking against the glass, and a dish of fresh fruit, slices of orange and grapefruit and bananas and grapes. John's tray was loaded with just the sort of meal his mother was always trying to persuade him to eat. Until today, John had always thought it was pretty dull to eat sensible things, when there were sweeter food and drink to be had. Today, however, the sensible things looked most appetizing, and his mouth began to water in its new, sticky way. John paid for the lunch with the money his mother had given him, went to an empty table, and sat down. His fingers trembling slightly with eagerness, he cut a slice of lettuce. His fork went through the leaves with a promising crunch. He stuck the prongs of the fork into a mouth-sized piece of lettuce and carefully inserted it into his mouth. The lettuce didn't touch his wide-stretched lips. John's teeth came together in crisp layers of sweet, chocolate. He took a small piece of potato chip, tilted back his head until he was looking straight up at the ceiling, and dropped the morsel straight down into his throat. He felt it go down, a sharp fragment of sweet chocolate. He tried the milk, 
the ice water, the fruit. Every solid and liquid that he sampled was transformed as soon as it entered his mouth. Then he became aware of a shocking novelty that he hadn't noticed at breakfast. At the rim of each glass, there was a small semicircle of opaque brown. The bowl of his spoon and the prongs of his fork had become brown. As John watched, horrified, the areas of magic chocolate slowly spread until at last the glasses and cutlery were all solid chocolate. The trouble was unquestionably growing worse. John's scalp tightened with fear. What am I going to do? He asked himself miserably. Oh, dear! Oh, dear! What is going to happen to me? Leaving his tray of chocolate food and drink and utensils, John stumbled away from the cafeteria and out to the playground. I like chocolate everywhere, but I do not like it in my home.